Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Uh, hello, this is Mr. Starscream, uh, invited to give a audio commentary on the latest episode of Cut the Tape by Rick Alvarez. By the power of grace. So we'll be, com- I mean, as long as the studio at TF Talk News has no problem with this, I'm going to be giving this commentary. Extreme. Um, first off, I am absolutely sure that Rick does not have a real Master Sword. If you smell what Austin and he has most likely never been given any power by Grayskull. Episode of Cut the Tape. Tonight, for the first time ever, we are going to be talking about Transformers, specifically... Um, another inaccuracy, Rick has definitely talked about Transformers quite a bit. I have been sitting on these for a few years now, waiting for the right time to open them. It just so happens my alternator shelf is now set up. Ah, alternators, yes. A great choice. I'm missing two small additions to that loose set. Of course, these are my duplicates, because I have to have two of everything, one sealed and then one open to display. So as, as you see, um, any psychologist would probably for the first diagnose time. Rick with a few different conditions, but I don't want to be... You know, I'm no expert myself, being somewhat of a robot. Focused on. But what's very cool is that he is showing some cool alternators here. Some of my favorites. Ravage. The Jaguar version. Actually, it's Battle Ravage. No, 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 no. That's the other one. This is actually Ravage. And... And Rumble. 2002... And it came out in Japan by Takara. Rick likes to uh, give, drop some real knowledge on you, so I'll try not to talk over all of it. Revolutionary. Oh, God. What was that? The Subaru? It was the car that Well, you know, he has to give the full history. Of course, Smokescreen was the first alternator, vinyl tech, you know. If you weren't there and you don't know this, that's your problem, not ours. We don't have to tell you everything. Hardest to get. If you weren't there, you, there's always the wiki, man. It really does have its reward. Uh, I had these guys sealed, but I didn't have a second one to open. And then, as luck would have it, I went to work at Hasbro. Oh, did you? Of course you did, Rick. We know that. At least we've heard through the grapevine at some some point. Okay, they're mine now. So uh, here they are. Um, these are not green tags. So, unfortunately... For Rick, you know, th- he had to buy these at the store like everyone else. Uh, let's say we start with Ravage. <clears throat> Ravage, Rick. Ravage is his real name. I want to talk to you about the alternators that didn't make the line. Uh, two of these were shown in the Rector Hall of Fame video. Uh, one was the actual input for Alternators Megatron. Uh, there was actually two alternator Megatrons. So the first one was the Cadillac C- Two alternator Megatrons. That's the first I've heard of that. And the car had, uh, the design had pretty much been laid out. Unfortunately, the line at that point was already on its way out. Masterpiece was already being envisioned. And so that Megatron didn't get made. Wow! The second alternator Megatron was featured in the Erector Hall of Fame video, and it was the first Megatron to actually be designed for the alternators. The Cadillac came later. This tank Megatron uh, was designed by Joseph Kide, who is no longer with Hasbro. Uh, okay, so tank Megatron for alternators. Hmm, not sure that would have worked. Kind of didn't really, you know, do tanks even have alternators? To make them work, I don't know. I've never messed with the engine. Which was an Abrams tank, I believe, in the Rector Hall of Fame video. It's E. 
Erector. Erector. Alternator is a Ravage. It's a Jaguar. Yes, yeah, so the kitty cat became a Jaguar car, of course. How cute. Hasbro made a good one there. It was weird because we'd already had Battle Ravage, but, you know, who's complaining? Think back, all right, they came out in 2002 in Japan, and then uh, by 2006, the line was ending, and these were the last two guys that came out. Uh, Rumble and... You know, these, these weren't necessarily hard to get, but if you were, you know busy not caring about Transformers, you might have been snoozing. You might have been taking a good old nap. Uh, steering column on the right-hand side versus the left-hand side for East versus West. Uh, cultures are different. Uh, people drive on the wrong... Different sides of the road. There is no right... Oh, come on, Rick. You know there's a right, right and wrong side. And so the cars reflect that. There are alternators that were made die-cast, and then there are... You know, I wish I could give you some history on, like... 18 minutes ago when I watched this for the first time and kind of like give you constant commentary, but this is the first time I've watched it. You get elements such as KISS players. We'll skip over that. No, no. We're going to talk about KISS players because that's the line that gets... That's the black sheep. KISS players is actually a good good toy line. Some of the best alternators ever in that. You get the Optimus... You get, well, Convoy with the... Melissa or whatever with the surfboard sword. That thing is cool. Auto Rooper. Good stuff. You know what? Cost some mint now because you were snoozing. Because you were too worried about, you know, weird cultural insensitivities. Kiss players. Check it out. Don't read the comic or manga, though. From the chest up in one of the early Botcon comics or... You know what they really need to do have done was make an alternator's Starscream. I mean, they didn't do it. They made Shockwave a car, but not Starscream. Uh, from two thousand. I mean, come on. Were you scared of repaints or something? Anyway, <clears throat> Optimus Prime. Why are we? How to get Optimus Prime? I thought we're talking about Ravage and Friends Balls. The U.S. is not necessarily popular in someone else's culture. So, as you see. Hasbro wanted to There's a lot of toys behind Rick. Doesn't that look nice? That's a really nice display. A line that both sides were paying for. Nice big open space. Stuff not stacked. Well, it's all stacked all over each other, but he's got shelves. That's the key. You don't want these things crushing each other, collectors. They don't sell pickup trucks. Well, I'll tell you what. The joke's on me. Because I just spent the last ten minutes talking about Rick's little show here. And I didn't press the record button. So here, you get my sloppy seconds take on Rick using his murder knife to murder his plastic toy box. This is great, actually. Now I'm even more pissed off, so you're going to get a really good commentary. That this particular one, you know, I was at the Hasbro employee store, and uh, for some reason... They Again with the Hasbro stuff. Six years after this item came out. And, no, oh, it wasn't six years. Uh, it was a long time. It was, let's, let's say it was almost six years. I go to the Hasbro employee store, and there's this thing sitting on the I'm going to say it was 18 years, because that's what it feels like every minute I watch this video, Rick. Boom. You know, I should have probably checked to see what these sell for. I think they're, uh, I think they're still mint. Well, they're not anymore. There was an Alternator's Ravage prior to this. I already talked about that. Battle Ravage. He was a badass. He had guns on his forearms. Part of the tracks mold. Why, why Ravage, the kitty cat, became a car when he was usually a tape and not Starscream as a cool car, I'll never know. I've asked Aaron Archer himself, and he's like, who cares, man? And It's like it didn't happen. At one point... The Sideswipe Sunstreaker, the Viper, that was going to be Trax at one point. And then they switched it. I mean, you know, they made... Alt so, so after Alternators, which is the greatest toy line no one cares about anymore, then they made Alternity, which was like smaller, way more complicated, more metal and stuff. Just different scale. And uh, I'll ship it to you. I don't know why you want that. 
But the reason I bring up Alternity is because they made Car Scream, which was completely bizarre. It was actually weirder than Battle Ravage or Ravage Jay himself. He was a white car, and they turned the whole top of the car around to be like wings. And he looked like some sort of demon ghoul thing. It was, it was weird. I wouldn't recommend it, but it is strange. It's in vehicle mode. Well, this is a very robust test of Rick's here, but I think I have to agree with him. The toys these days have just like so much undercarriage crap, and they're like, well, maybe it will clear it. I don't know. Now, as I said, this is the second Ravage. Uh, this is the only character to be done twice in the Alternators line. Now, so yeah, there's a. Uh, let's not talk about Ravage anymore. Ravage, Ravage sucks. Let's um, inspect what's going on behind Rick here. So, there is a Goodbye Convoy gift set just just hanging out. Looks like it's in great shape. My guess is that it probably doesn't even have a flap crease because all those have huge flap creases. I'm sure it includes the poster as well. You know, only Rick could verify that himself. But he's got a lot of little G1 gems in there, you know, some good stuff. All the stuff you the stuff you want, especially if you're like at least 50. I think they probably drew inspiration. You know, it's a boomer collection, but you know, it brings the boom. Where G1 Ravage makes a cameo in Okay, we're talking about Beast Wars now. The one episode I even cared about is the one where Ravage shows up and he turns into a cassette and he jumps in the jumps in the <laughs> cassette slot in the. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, that's you know that's Battle Ravage. I think that's who it's supposed to be. Over the years, we all know that. Rick, I'm pretty sure this is called cut the tape, not transform the toy. On Revenge of the Fallen, Optimus Prime. Oh, oh, I will get you started on Revenge of the Fallen Optimus Prime. Probably the greatest toy we've ever gotten at that scale, at that price point, at that volume of production. They couldn't transform it. And they go to the parents, mommy, daddy, you know, make it into a car or a robot. And the parents like, ah. We don't care. You don't care either. You're glad that it's hard to transform. I know you are. You're, this, this, this conversation is funny. Changed. We had a whole meeting about it, and so when you look at the Dark of the Moon figures, that that initial Optimus Prime. You see this meeting that he's talking about. There's actually footage from it. You ever seen that meme, that drawing of the, like the boardroom and the angry guy is like, "What do we do?" And there's like people giving shitty shitty uh, suggestions, and then the one guy with his hands on the table that's hardly trying says, "Why don't we?" Why don't we not make the toys crappy and easy to use? And that was Rick, and they threw him out the window. It was sad. He broke all his bones and stuff, but he never tells you that part of the story. How the... But I was there. I saw it. And I have to hand it to him. He had a good idea. Not be bad. Transformers. Cheers? Oh, they don't. Toys Rick doesn't remember how to play with. I see. All right. I mean, we're pretty much there, right? You know, some things of value to be seen on Rick's display. You see the entire Voyager selection of animated toys. I see two Optimus Primes. I bet one of them has the Autobot symbol on the shoulder and one does not because he's a bowler. Beyond that, there's some real worthless crap in there, like that C2, uh, not C2E2. San Diego Comic-Con set of soap toys, as we call them, on the far left with the big Autobot symbol on it. That is just straight up garbage we all paid for. Then they, then they were, you can still get those at Walmart. Like, they're all thrown, strewn across the shelf for like $5. Drink two beers for being late to the party. Here we go. I'll drink a beer. Alternator Ravage. Now... Alternator Ravage, you know, worth um, worth the pickup because it's the only alternator that turns into an animal instead of a robot. I believe this guy came at the end of the line and is incredibly hard to get because this is one of the best alternators. I still think... Agreed. That Subaru Impreza, that 
Smokescreen is one of the best. I mean, the first time you held an alternator in your hand. I was at CyberCon. I mean, what alternator is bad? Maybe, maybe Wind Charger? Even that kind of looks cool. And I opened it right then and there. In front of everybody. Just because Grimlock and Wheeljack were ungodly hard to transform the first time you did it doesn't make them bad. I mean, they are awesome toys. I mean, the, the seats, the bucket seats become their feet, which is totally stupid, like, fundamentally, but kind of a cool idea. Chevy was still active, uh, while all these other cars were not. Uh, so we threw around a couple ideas for alternators for the club. However, there were a few things. One, we had to pay royalties to the oh. company. And Is he going to talk about the blue rumble here or what? Had to pay royalties to the car company. Another one was Takara was being stingy at the time because we were also talking about doing a masterpiece toy for Bacon. And they said, well, if you do an alternator, if you do a masterpiece, it's fine, but you could only do one. And. We're like, oh, okay, well, yeah, we're just going to do one. It's like, no, you can only do one toy. So because there was already a format. There was a so they chose not to do any of them? Your figures you get uh, at the show. Bop count! Making good decisions every day! That's one figure for the whole show. So once that came down, the whole idea was scrapped. Uh, we were tossing around masterpiece ideas, but at the time it was just Optimus and Starscream. Megatron, we couldn't do. We we knew we couldn't do Megatron, so we were thinking, you know, what can we do Optimus as? And uh, and it just it never got very far after that. I mean, that's a pretty bad. Uh, that's a pretty bad excuse for not doing it. Couldn't come up with an idea. Erector Hall of Fame video. Actually, you can't. You can't look at the Erector Hall of Fame video. Uh, Come on, Rick. Just show us the Erector Hall of Fame video. We know you want to. Someone should put that online one day. I think, I think it is online. Yeah. You just gotta know where to look. Well, tell us. Anyway, Erector. Uh, we did a Erector design. Well, there's only about two more minutes left in this video, and we still haven't opened Rumble, so I'm going to make a real risky bet to say we're not going to cut the tape on Rumble tonight. Uh, Smokescreen, of course, was released as, uh, Pro as Blue Streak. Uh, oddly enough, it wasn't released as Prowl, right? You had the, uh, the Mazda. Uh, God, I can't even remember. You know, we really need an informational video explaining, one by one, the history of the Alternity toy line. Maybe some fancy Transformers historian like S Steve McNeevy or whatever could do it. I'm sorry, Chris McFeely. Yeah. It wasn't a Well, I'd like to thank Rick for allowing me, Mr. Starscream, um, the option of spending a bunch of time making this commentary since my hardware crashed about 12 times during the making of it, but it was a good time. So anyway, you know what? I gotta go pick up my kid, so we're just gonna put this guy back in the pile. Anyway, that's so, I guess I win the rumble bet. You're free to do what you want. We'll see if I come back for a future commentary. Uh, enjoy... The rest of the video, the next 10 seconds, TF Talk News Cut the tape. is currently on hold. Thanks.